right, buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to talk about this idea of three comings of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, essentially two returns of the Lord Jesus. All right, and I want to uh, thank everybody for these comments, and I want to encourage people to be bold. Share your thoughts, whether you agree or disagree. This is how we sharpen one another. All right. So, first of all, let me just say this great, great comments from George Jansen, and uh, he makes a really great point that if your preacher is telling you that you can lose your salvation, he is trying to control you. Because if you can lose your salvation, then you have to depend on him to tell you how to maintain your salvation. Alright. So, great job from George right there. Alright. And, alright, so we're going to focus in on William Verdell, 8856. All right, he says the first three and a half years of the seven year period is a time of troubles, earthquakes, nation against nation, kingdom against kingdom, precursors to the time of the great tribulation. That's not found anywhere at all in the Bible. Uh, when you're going, when you're talking about uh, Matthew 24, um, this is not a, a chronological series of events. This is all pertaining to the end of the world. You got to keep in mind what is the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? This is the question and the context. Alright, and uh, Jesus just makes it very clear that you're going to see these things. These are not new things, alright? Now these things are not coming to an end until it's the end of the world. Alright? And all he's stating is that these are the beginnings. Alright? the beginnings of sorrows. Now, this is not, all right, this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and this is going to happen, and then the end. It's not like that at all. All right, the overall message being uh, taught here is that things are going to get worse and worse and worse until the end of the world. All right? So there's no, you know, breaking this up into time periods. You throw all that out the window. Alright. And specifically, um, you know, you got... Huh. No no three, no three and a half years, and then not even seven years is found in Matthew 24. In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21, these are the easiest explanations for the end of the world that you're going to find anywhere in the Bible. And these are the direct, direct words of our Lord Jesus Christ. Nobody explains it better than he does. All right, regarding Daniel 7, 21 through 25, William says that, tells us the saints, which is the church will be given into the hands of the Antichrist for his entire reign of three and a half years. So if the church is here for the entire reign of the Antichrist, how was the time of great tribulation shortened for the elect or the church? Okay, so first of all, we'll go to Daniel 7, and we'll see that there is no mention of three and a half years. All right, so we got three ribs, three of the first horns, three fell, and three kings. So you're not getting this idea of three and a half years anywhere in Daniel 7. Right, it's not in Daniel anywhere and it's not found anywhere in the Bible of, of you know three and a half year tribulation nor a seven year tribulation. Not found anywhere at all in the Bible. Alright so uh, he asked a pretty good question here. If the church is here for the entire reign of the Antichrist how was the time of great tribulation shortened? All right, again, um, Jesus explains it better than anybody. In Matthew 24, he says, Except those days be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. 
So again, it's quite apparent, pretty obvious. The reason these days are shortened is because the deception is so great. And real quickly, let's go back to Daniel 7. Uh, this is talking about the fourth beast. Okay, so if you know Daniel 7, or Dan, the book of Daniel, he talks about four kings. All right, the first is the Babylonian Empire. The second is the Medes and the Persians. And the third is the Greek Empire. And he never mentions the name of the fourth empire. But we know what the fourth empire is by reading Luke chapter 2, where Caesar uh, decrees a decree or whatever that, that the whole world should be taxed. So by this we know that the Roman Empire is the fourth beast. All right, and then of course, uh, by reading uh, Revelation 17, the great whore, mystery, Babylon the great, we know that this great whore, the fourth beast, the beast that was and is not and yet is, is the transformation of the Roman Empire into the Roman Catholic Church. All right, and so here in Daniel 7, we, we see that at the end of the world, after the fourth beast is destroyed, then there is a new kingdom, an everlasting kingdom is set up. Okay, so this is consistent all throughout the Bible. Alright, and then here's a red flag right here. Alright, the way this works is the wrath of God, which is the bowls. Alright, you've been smoking too many bowls. And the wrath of the Lamb, which is the trumpets, both happen after the seven year period is over for a minimum of three years and 11 months longer than the seven year period. Okay, so that's, that's just uh, too much confusion right there. All right, so let's look at this word bowls. So we notice that this word bowl is not found anywhere in Daniel, nor is it found in the book of Revelation. So we'll do a search for the word vile and we see that it's in the new in the revelation all right and let's use revelation 15 7 as an example do not confuse this with the four beasts of daniel okay now and one of the four beasts gave unto the seven angels seven golden vials full of the wrath of god who liveth forever and ever all right, so if we look at all the translations, we notice here that the ESV, here, we'll do it this way. All right, we see all these Bible versions are smoking a lot of bowls, and they're not believing in the Word of God. All right, so we see that the ESV is one of them, and the NASB is another, and the NIV is another. But, of course, the King James Bible does not use that word. Talk, the word is vile. So, okay, this word here alone is not that big of a deal. All right, it's just a red flag that tells me you don't believe in any Bible at all. all right. And All right, so continue here. The four trumpets, last trumpet, fifth trumpet, sixth trumpet, three years. All right, so this is all gobbledygook. All right. And so if you get the part one wrong, you're going to, part two and part three is going to be, can't be right. Okay. <laughs> you got to have a foundation of truth. Otherwise, you got a foundation and everything built on it is lies. All right. So there's nothing in the Bible that talks about three comings of the Lord Jesus Christ. The idea is ridiculous. All right. And I want to scroll down a little bit. And um, let me see if I can find, okay. What is this? Abraham Peace Accords in September. Is that something you heard Dan Rather talk about? I have no idea what that is. Alright. 
and you know to me Abraham peace accords uh, strongly suggest a, a Jewish connection to it uh, trying to Jewish and Islam connection I, I don't know what it is it's a worldly thing okay All right. Okay. Here we go. What's this? The seven-year period is a seven-year period for the fulfilling of Daniel's final week. Right there. Red flag. All right. So this tells me, aside from the fact that you don't believe in any Bible, you don't believe the Word of God, that you believe that the, Jesus is the Antichrist. All right. When you say the seven-year period is a seven-year period, right, that's brilliant all by itself, but. Um, a seven year period for the fulfilling of Daniel's final week to fulfill prophecy. So, uh, you know, <laughs> uh, what, where is that at? Is that Daniel 11? Or Daniel 9, excuse me, okay. So in Daniel 9, uh, this final week that he's talking about, he's going to say that the Messiah is the Antichrist, or the Antichrist is the Messiah. And speaking of the last week, he's going to say, it's not Jesus, but the Antichrist. Or he's saying that Jesus is the Antichrist. Alright, because who is the one that made an end of sins? Who laid down their life to make reconciliation for iniquity? Who brings in everlasting righteousness? All right. So if you say this is the Antichrist, you're saying Jesus is the Antichrist. All right, because he is the one that caused the sacrifice and oblation to cease. He is the one that confirmed the covenant when he laid down his life to be the sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. He is the offering made to God on our behalf. For those of us that believe in Him. And of course the consummation is uh, His return when we are changed into our glorified bodies. This is clearly speaking of Jesus. Alright, and if you think that Jesus is the Antichrist, you're on the wrong side of the fence. Now look, I get it. You heard some preachers tell you, well, this is talking about the Antichrist. Well, you didn't stop to think. What does the Bible actually say? And are you going to trust what the Bible says, or are you going to touch, or are you going to uh, trust what the Reverend says? Right, it's very clear. This is Jesus. He is the one that fulfilled the 70 weeks which began as Daniel was contemplating the 70 years of desolation and the angel came to Daniel and told him to consider the vision. 70 weeks are to determined upon thy people and in the final week is when Jesus lays down his life putting in of sins all right and blessed and holy is he whom the Lord will not impute sin all right so now God looks at us as sinless all right Jesus has made a reconciliation for iniquity he has brought in everlasting righteousness all right and he confirmed it when he laid down his life it's really simple man yeah. all right he died and was dead for three days and on the third day he rose back to life he rebuilt the temple <clears throat> okay He's the one that rebuilt the temple. All right. He destroyed the temple, and then he rebuilt the temple. All right, and now he's in heaven. All right, so let's 
go over this real quick. All right, and John chapter 2. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was this temple and building, and wilt thou rear it up in three days? Yeah. So anybody that says that uh, the Jerusalem was destroyed in 70 AD, they are uh, liars, they are blind, and they are deceivers. Uh, because this has nothing at all to do with 70 AD and has everything to do with Jesus laying down his life and making an end of sins and reconciliation for iniquity and bringing in everlasting life or everlasting righteousness all right so when Jesus laid down his life he destroyed the temple all right and then when he rose it when he rose back to life he rebuilt the temple and ascended to heaven and the Jerusalem now is in heaven and not on earth alright so now Jerusalem is above and it's not on earth man the Jerusalem that's over there in the Middle East today they full-on reject the Lord Jesus Christ okay so Jerusalem is above <clears throat> all right the city of God is above and Jesus has rebuilt the temple and he's restored Jerusalem which is now in heaven and when he comes in the clouds of heaven we are lifted up to meet the Lord in the air and, and then we will be set back down on the earth alright so there's one thing that's really important that I have to go over so when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world alright and when it's the end of the world it's the end of the world All right, there is no more thousand year period there's no seven year period there's no three and a half year period alright because it's the end of the world All right. So at the end of the world, we are lifted up and our enemy is gathered at our feet. Fire comes down from heaven and devours them all. All right. So at the end of the world, we are transformed into our glorified bodies. We put on our incorruptible bodies and our glorified bodies. We are changed. Right? At the last trump, which is the end of the world. All right, when this happens, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. All right, so there is no more extended periods of time. It's the end of the world. Everything is changed. Just as Jesus says in Revelation 21, Behold, I make all things new. All right so there should be no question about it when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven it is the end of the world and we are lifted up we that are born of God are lifted up we are changed in a moment in the twinkling of night at the last trump this is the end of the world we are changed right it, th there shouldn't be any doubt about this this is simple stuff but when you start listening to false teachers, they're going to cloud your mind if you believe them and not what the simple Word of God says. All right. And it's all very simple. All you have to do is connect the dots. Now, I want to make one point here about, uh, you know, uh, the, the two coming to or two returns of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so uh, years ago, there was a young fella who said there was over 20 returns of the Lord Jesus because he said that every time that's mentioned in the Bible, it's a different return of Jesus. All right, so he was unable to connect the dots. Now, what I'm telling you is connect the dots, okay? So you got two. You got Jesus coming back here in this verse, and then you got another verse that says Jesus is coming back all you have to do is connect the dots all right so I'm not sure exactly what you might be referring to 
Uh, when you say there are three comings or two returns of the Lord, I mean, um, the, the idea is, it, there's really no way to say it, but it's stupid. All right, Jesus returns once, all right, and when he returns, you know, he comes in the clouds of heaven, and we are lifted up to meet him. I feel like I'm just repeating myself here. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, it's over. It's over. There is no superiority reign of the Antichrist. Man, I'm telling you, the Antichrist is here. The scripture is clear. And... The Antichrist is the fourth beast, the son of perdition. All right, and the man of sin and the false Christ that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24 and Revelation 17, described as the great whore, mystery, Babylon the Great, and Babylon the Great is the uh, in the spirit of the first beast, which is the, in the Babylonian Empire. All right, so the first beast is Babylonian. Second beast is the Medes and the Persians. The third beast is the Greek Empire, and the fourth beast is the Roman Empire, which transitioned into the Roman Catholic Church. The beast that was, it is not, and yet is. All right, so when it says there are seven kings and five are fallen, one is and one is yet to come. This is speaking of a succession of kings. All right, and um, so all these kings are um, is what they're referring to as the Antichrist. All right, they all are the Antichrist. They all assume the position or the role of the Antichrist all right, which is what Daniel talks about in you know Daniel uh, you know 7 for example we were looking at that earlier the fourth king um, the fourth beast is the fourth kingdom okay so the fourth kingdom has many kings all right just a succession of kings it's typical all right, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High. All right, and this is obviously happening right now. Daniel is spot on. All right, and Daniel did not have greater knowledge than Jesus. Jesus just makes it simpler. He makes it easier to understand, and nobody understands it better than our Lord. Jesus Christ and 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3 but I fear lest by any means as the serpent beguiled Eve through his subtlety so your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Christ okay everything that's in the Bible is simple and it's there for the dummies like me can understand it. And if if a dummy like me can understand the Bible, then obviously it's not about intelligence. It's not about access to uh, extra biblical books. It's always about faith. It's always been about faith. All right, we go to Hebrews 11 and see, man, this has always been about faith 27 times. Look at that. It's always been about faith. All right, and if you don't have faith, then there's a veil that is upon your heart. Faith, man. It's always been about, about faith. It's never been about how smart you are. Alright, in fact, the, the dumber you are, 
the chances are greater that you're going to be able to see. Right? Psalm 9, uh, Psalm 19, verse 7, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. And the simple here is in reference to essentially dummies like me. All right. Remember, it's about faith. Believing the Bible that you hold in your hands is from God. Because it is.